Morning. I hope everybody's doing great. We've had a lot of rain here at the Minimalist Cottage, but the sunshine is out now, and it's a beautiful blue sky and some autumn colors. And I hope you're able to enjoy those colors and uh, get filled up with happiness by the blue sky and the reds and the uh, yellows and the oranges of the autumn colors like I am. It fills up your spirit and renews you. We've been talking about the um, geologic history of Georgia and the southeastern United States. And we talked about supercontinent Rodinia, which existed about a billion years ago. And that Rodinia rifted apart, like all supercontinents do, between 750 uh, million and 550 million years. After that rifting occurred, uh, we talked about in one of our last videos about how we got the rift to drift sequence of sediments, which is a layer of sandstone, sand that can make sand beaches, that makes sandstone, a layer of mud on top of that that turns into shale and eventually slate, then finally a layer of mud, a limestone on top of that, uh, all the which represents all the creatures of the Cambrian explosion. And that is what happens every time a supercontinent rifts apart. Um, the lands, the, the different continent pieces sink. O the ocean transgresses, which means it rises and covers the land and lays down that rift to drift sequence of sediments that I just mentioned. After that, in a period of quiescence between rifting events and converging events, crashing events, you get a, what is called passive margin sediments. And we looked at those and they're very similar. You get sand beaches and sand coastal plain uh, at the water's edge. Uh, and then you get the mud as you go out deeper and then even deeper you get the limestone. And then finally, that's those are continental shelf deposits. Then you get to the place where the continental shelf drops off on, into a, a slope, a steep slope. On that steep continental slope you get turbidites, meta graywack and turbidite sandstone just like you see at Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Even though the turbidites at Great Smoky Mountains National Park were not deposited on a continental slope, they were deposited in uh, deep rift basins or rift grobbins associated with rifting. You can get them there too. Now we're going to talk, oh, let's look at the situation up to this point and talk about what's coming next, which is a crashing event. Okay, you remember this picture? This is what the edge of the North American proto-North American continent, some people call it Laurentia, looked like after Rodinia rifted. Um, and you see the uh, this hunk of land here that goes from North Carolina down to Georgia. It may have extended down into uh, the coast of Alabama too. Florida was underwater at that time. All, actually, all of this was underwater. Shallow water of the Cambrian explosion. Now, th this is a big hunk of land crust that broke loose during the rifting process and drifted out onto the continental shelf uh, away from the main continent. And that's the way the situation existed up here going from Virginia all the way up through New York, there was no rifted hunk. Most geologists agree there was not a rifted hunk because this rifted hunk caused subsequent events to fall out the way they did. Okay, now things began to change. Somewhere way on the eastern side of Africa or proto-Africa, which is way, way, way over here with the Proto-Atlantic or Iapetus Ocean in between Laurentia and Africa. But I'm talking about even on the east side of Africa, an ocean basin began to rift apart. Uh, a great longitudinal hotspot developed and started pushing ocean crust toward the west, and that pushed Africa toward the west, which pushed all the ocean crust between Proto-North America and Africa also to the west. A convergence plate boundary is about to be formed 
crashing is about to occur in many places. What happens when the ocean crust on out here begins to move this way, it piles up and pressure builds and a piece of the ocean crust breaks. And here's, here's what happened in this area. As Africa approached and it was pushing a ocean crust in front of it and the ocean crust hit here and then broke and subducted, went down underneath this rifted hunk. And here's what it looked like right here. Here's the uh, side view. This is the side view. Here's the continent, the land crust of Laurentia or Proto-North American continent. Here's that ocean crust coming this way. And this is the rifted hunk. That's kind of a funny drawing of it, but that's the rifted hunk. Well, this ocean crust broke here, subducted underneath this rifted hunk. Same thing as this hunk. This is just the bird's eye view. This is the side view. Um, so the rifted hunk goes way, way up, all the way across Georgia and North Carolina. It subducted, the ocean crust subducted, broke and went down. That subducted into the mantle, the molten mantle. All this stuff melted, and two things happened. Bunches of magma rose up into this crust, into this piece of crust, and created a volcanic island chain all along this crust, this piece of crust. A volcanic island chain was created all along here. That's not all. The uh, part of the ocean crust that subducted down in here began to boil back up and and come to the west and to the east, boiling up in what is called a back arc basin. And water, the ocean water, which I haven't drawn the water level, but most of this was underwater. The ocean water went down into this molten rock area, picked up gold, uh, got super hot and picked up gold because it was so hot that the gold just dissolved in it. Then... Since it was superheated, it expanded and rose up and flushed these ocean sediments full of gold. And that's where our Dahlonega gold came from. Let me show you a, a kind of a nicer picture of this from the side view, from the book. The book, The Rocks of Georgia. And you can get this book on Amazon, of course. Here's a good example. Here's a good drawing of it. Here's the continent. And here's the Western Blue Ridge uh, Rift Grobbins, the Great Smoky Mountains Rift Grobbins. This is the Cambrian Explosion Limestone that covered it all. Um, this is the rifted hunk was here, subducting ocean crust going down, turning this rifted hunk into a volcanic island chain. Volcanic Island Arc is another name for it and pumping gold into these sediments in between the rifted hunk and the mainland. Just let you look at that for a second. Okay. So, gold was pumped into this whole area between this rifted hunk and the mainland all along here. And that's where our Dahlonega gold belt came from. But that's the only thing that happened. No crashing occurred at this time from North Carolina south. Well, what happened from North Carolina north? Well, from North Carolina north, even though there was, it weren't, wasn't rifted hunks, the ocean crust still broke and subducted like this. Something more like this. Here's the continent from... Uh, the Virginia North Carolina line north. Here's ocean crust. Here's the ocean crust coming this way. And it broke right here, according to geologists, most geologists. And this piece subducted down and created a volcanic island chain 
also. So different, slightly different subduction processes between the southern uh, states, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and the, the, the middle and northern states from Virginia north. Uh, yes, island arc, volcanic island chains were created in both instances. Probably it was one long, it looked like one long volcanic island chain all the way from Alabama north to through New York. But the difference was Georgia and North Carolina, South Carolina got gold because of the subduction that went this way under this rifted hunk. Whereas up here, there was no gold. From Virginia north, there was no gold because the subduction zone was an east-dipping subduction zone, and there wasn't a rifted hunk to cause the break like there was down here. Okay, so that's what happened, and that's called the taconic orogeny, except I forgot to tell you the main part of it. And the main part of it is from from Virginia north, there was huge crashing all the way up to New York and even further north in Maine. Um, the volcanic island chain crashed into the mainland here, creating huge mountains, and uh, those huge mountains pressed down, straight down on all this edge of the continent, even down here. And that caused uh, a basin to exist, and they call that the Foreland Basin. And that Foreland Basin, down here in this in this part, North Carolina to Georgia, the the basin did get pushed down uh, because there was a island arc here, and it did push down. Uh, and so we have a lot of limestone was deposited in Georgia, and we call that the Chickamauga limestone. Uh, but that's about all. Whereas from Virginia north, not only was lots of limestone deposited, but also tremendous amounts of reddish, iron-rich reddish and greenish mud and sandstone, which eroded off of these giant taconic mountains that smashed in to the continent up here. Those sediments, as they eroded, first came the mud, and then came the sand, doesn't that sound kind of reverse of when the as uh, uh, in reverse from when the ocean comes up? It is in reverse because it's the opposite of an ocean rising and transgressing. It's the land sort of transgressing, a mountain eroding its sediments. The mud comes down first as the mountains rise up, and it's washed way out out into the basin, and and that covers the limestone that originally formed when there were no no sediments uh, draining into here, but yet it was it was uh, pushed down as a foreland basin. And then the sand, the rivers, uh, the, the river, del the deltas and the rivers, the beaches, the barrier islands and all that, the, which is sand, came down on top of that. And all those deposits are called the Queenston Delta. The Queenston Delta. You find the Queenston Delta in New York. You find it in Pennsylvania. You find it in Virginia and West Virginia. You don't find it in North Carolina. You don't find it in South Carolina. You don't find it in Georgia. Why? Because this did not crash. Yes, a volcanic island chain was created. Yes, gold, Dahlonega gold was deposited in here. But there was no crashing. And so there was no, from, from here down, there wasn't crashing during Taconic. So there was no major sediments deposited and thus no Queenston Delta. And that's 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 one of the main reasons we know that the crashing didn't occur here because there's no, these Delta deposits, mud and then sand that were deposited all up in here and called the Queenston Delta did not, did not occur down here. So that's the Taconic Orogeny. Some people call it the Taconian Orogeny. And uh, that's where we got our Eastern Blue Ridge and Inner Piedmont, Eastern Blue Ridge and Inner Piedmont, and we also got our Dahlonega Gold. I'll tell you more about both of these structures, and we also got our Chickamauga Limestone that you find when you go into the Georgia Valley and Ridge Province, uh, and some other sediments. I think the Greensport Shale is part of that too. So um, that's the story about the Taconian 
mountain building event or tachonic orogeny, however you want to say it. And that's what most geologists believe happened. So, that's the story for today. Make a point to have a good, happy day today. And I'll be thinking about you. Okay, pop out.